In a previous video, we saw a variety of applications in which gypsum is used, exploiting its setting and hardening characteristics. In this video, we will see that these characteristics rely on coupling the precipitation of gypsum with the dissolution of either anhydrite or hemihydrate, generally referred to as plaster of Paris. Gypsum is a calcium sulfate dihydrate. It is partially soluble with each mole dissolved releasing one mole of calcium 2 plus ions, one mole of sulfate 2 minus ions, and two moles of water. At equilibrium, the combined amount of calcium and sulfate ions is 2 grams per liter, which is low but not insignificant and explains why gypsum can most often not be used in outdoor constructions, as it would then suffer serious leaching. Gypsum is found in nature as deposits which are quarried and then thermally decomposed into plaster, chemically hemihydrate. There, one mole of gypsum, our calcium sulfate dihydrate, can be heated to give one mole of calcium sulfate hemihydrate and 1.5 moles of water in the vapor phase. At ambient temperature, this reaction is non-spontaneous and endothermic with a positive change in entropy. Because the reaction is endothermic, the principle of Le Chatelier tells us that it will be favored by an increase in temperature. Similar but quantitative predictions about this can be reached by considering how the reaction-free energy changes with temperature. For this, let us plot delta G versus temperature. Positive values represent non-spontaneous processes while negative values are for spontaneous ones. At 25 degrees Celsius, the decomposition of gypsum to hemihydrate and water is non-spontaneous, so delta G is positive and gypsum is the stable phase. To see how delta G changes with temperature, let us go back to the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. We previously saw that both delta H and delta S are positive, and neither of these changes much with temperature. So, when temperature increases, delta G decreases because of the term minus T delta S. Delta G eventually becomes negative, which means that the stable phase is then hemihydrate. The temperature for which delta G equals zero, and for which, therefore, phase equilibrium is reached, is obtained by rearranging this equation to give T equals delta H, over delta S. This phase equilibrium temperature lies between 100 and 120 degrees Celsius, above which the decomposition becomes spontaneous. This is much easier to achieve than the 900 degrees Celsius required to produce quicklime. Hemihydrate is 14 times more soluble in water than gypsum. When dissolving in water, hemihydrate and gypsum both release one mole of calcium and one mole of sulfates, but hemihydrate only releases half a mole of water instead of two. This reaction can also be written with integer stoichiometric coefficients by multiplying all terms by two, giving that two moles of calcium sulfate hemihydrate dissolve in water to release two moles of calcium, two moles of sulfates, and one mole of water. This reaction is both exothermic and spontaneous at ambient temperature. Because gypsum has a lower solubility than hemihydrate, when calcium and sulfate ions are released in solution by the hemihydrate, their concentrations rapidly exceed the solubility of gypsum, and gypsum will precipitate, consuming ions from the solution. This drives hemihydrate to continue dissolving without, however, ever reaching its saturation causing it to be eventually completely consumed if water remains available. The coupling of these reactions is a typical characteristic of mineral binders, whereby a low solubility phase precipitates, consuming ions released by the dissolution of another, more soluble phase. Combining both reactions, the global conversion of hemihydrate to gypsum becomes hemihydrate plus three and a half moles water 
gives gypsum. At ambient temperature, this reaction remains both exothermic and spontaneous, as for the dissolution of hemihydrate. This reaction can conveniently be rewritten using volumetric stoichiometric coefficients instead of molar stoichiometric coefficients, showing that one volume of gypsum and half a volume of water give 1.4 volumes of gypsum. This increases the volume of solids and, as for other mineral binders, explains the setting and hardening. Getting back to our overall reaction. As it is spontaneous at ambient temperature and strongly displaced towards the right side, equilibrium implies the presence of virtually zero hemihydrate, particularly in the presence of excess water. The principle of Le Chatelier tells us that removing water, thus going to very dry environments, will push the reaction to the left. However, at ambient temperature, this only really takes place under vacuum. From a thermodynamic point of view, we can look at this by returning to our plot of delta G versus temperature for the dehydration of gypsum to hemihydrate. By reducing relative humidity, we shift our equilibrium line downwards, which shifts the equilibrium temperature to lower values. This decreases the stability range of gypsum at the expense of hemihydrate, showing that dry environments favor hemihydrate. The free energy curve shifts downwards not because of a change in the standard free energy delta G0, but because of a change in the reaction quotient Q. Remember that delta G equals delta G0 plus RT ln Q, where, for the dehydration of gypsum, the expression for Q is the product between the activity of hemihydrate to the power 1, the activity of water to the power 3 halves, divided by the activity of gypsum to the power 1. However, as gypsum and hemihydrate are pure solids, their activities are unity. Moreover, the activity of water in the vapor phase is equivalent to the relative humidity, which leaves us with Q equals RH to the power 3 halves. This is substituted into the Gibbs free energy equation, which is rearranged to get delta G equals delta G0 plus 3 halves RT ln RH. A reduction in relative humidity below 100% makes the term ln RH increasingly negative, causing delta G to decrease and therefore to shift the equilibrium line downwards. For a reminder on chemical thermodynamics, please check our corresponding video. An alternative to hemihydrate is anhydrite, a naturally abundant calcium sulfate not containing any water molecules. Its dissolution releases calcium and sulfate ions in solution. Being more soluble than gypsum, its dissolution can also be coupled with gypsum precipitation to provide a mineral binder. Thereby, one mole of anhydrite reacts with two moles of water to provide one mole of gypsum. As with hemihydrate, this reaction is spontaneous and exothermic, but less so and slower. Rewriting this reaction with volumetric stoichiometric coefficients, we see that the solid's volume increases by 61%, slightly more than for plaster of Paris, or hemihydrate if you prefer, making anhydrite from this perspective also an effective mineral binder. Anhydrite is used instead of hemihydrate when longer open times are needed, something that its slower reaction can provide. Examples of its use include self-leveling screeds for flooring. In conclusion, the setting and hardening of gypsum involves the coupling between the dissolution of a more soluble phase, hemihydrate or anhydrite, and the precipitation of a less soluble phase, gypsum. In addition, these coupled reactions lead to an increase in the volume of solids, accounting for the observed setting and hardening. These basic principles also apply to other mineral binders 
as we will see in subsequent videos.